did manage to finish um, Edge Runners, Cyberpunk, and mm-hmm. uh, that is a fucking strong top to bottom sequence of episodes. Uh, great. Uh, I stopped originally at five, so interestingly, it's almost like if you were to break it up into Act One and Act Two, I kind of stopped on Act One. Um, So it was a perfect place, actually, to pick up and resume. Um, But that is a tight, fucking excellent 10-episode story. Short and sweet, character-driven. But more than anything, the setting is the main character. The city is such a a uh, well-established, living, interesting thing. And it reminds me of, like, my favorite parts about something like Sin City, where you're like, oh, the city is the focus, and we're just following stories of people that drown in it, people that get caught up in it, you know? And in this case, Night City feels like, yeah, just this shitty, hopeless, but look at the cool stuff. You're going to have cool implants while your life means nothing, you know, uh, kind of setting. And and there's the mega corpse, and there's the moon, and I don't know, man, uh, put an implant in drug yourself up because it's it's hopeless like that was a fantastic introduction to that setting and definitely makes me like uh, yeah i'm i'm fully in and i want to go play the game and find out more about this setting via edge runners you know it has made me interested way more than i was initially um what a fucking there great is now job by edge runners specific content in the main game now so damn straight Damn, it would be ridiculous. It would be you can find. nice, nice. Yeah, like it's so good that I I would hope that they would lean into that. Um, it worked, man. It did its job. Like it, it completely managed to just do the the like oh tie in and make you want to go see what the rest of this product is about thing. Like it it completely does it. It's uh it's really interesting because I you know I've always been a big fan of um, Mike Pondsmith's cyberpunk mm. world the the dark future as he calls it where it's like it's exactly what you said where night city is like nothing matters in that city like no matter mm. how far you get in your life or whatever cause you're fighting for like you just you will either fail uh shrivel up and die alone or just go out in a blaze of glory and So when, you know, the game got announced, like, whatever amount of years ago, like, I was so looking forward to it. And as we all know, when the game came out, it was not ready. But I still, I made, like, a feature-length review on it on my channel. But Hmm. uh, it's, the game, I I, I feel like, it's just really cool how, like, the game is, you know, through the hard work of CD Projekt Red, like, they were able to, like, get it to a place now where it's not just, like, shitting itself every two seconds. But, Hmm. like, the, the stories in like the main quest and the side quests are so good like from like a cyberpunk genre perspective that i'm i'm so happy that like this anime was that successful and is just its own like beautifully written and and told story in its own right that it's actually getting people to play the game and experience like the good shit that was always there but it actually works now, you know. Yeah, yeah. I I, I forgot. I think it was like seven hundred percent increase in in players. Um, uh, oh, once Edge Runners dropped, you know that like it just shot the popularity of the game back up. And of course, they've been patching it uh, over time to get better and better. So, um, yeah. I know. I, I someone just wrote over there. The city always wins, you know. Uh, and it's it just does, like yeah. that's that's a really great way to put it. Um, it it like. It's funny, too, because, like, going through, um, again, like, I guess the, the, the second act of sorts, it, it also reminds me of, um, did you see a Promare? Right? Yes. Like, it does kind of remind did. me of Promare, too, as well, in the sense that it's like, this is a, we could have taken more time with a lot of this. We could have stretched this out a bit, but, like, we're just going to compress it and make it, like, every every second of it counts, of what you see from here on out, you know, just to, to, to as it as it reaches its denouement, you know, um, as as everything intensifies, and um, <laughs> and I'm thinking of like I'm remembering like I think I saw an interview, like well, I saw a couple things. I saw one, um, yeah, the creator said like, yo, they nailed it, perfect, and that's that's always nice to see when yeah, it's like, yo, the yeah. creator is happy with the vision that you know mm-hmm. they, they managed to do, um, 
and the other one being the uh the interview where they were like yeah so we wanted originally to we were asking trigger to redesign rebecca and they said something to the effect of no the lolly is nah. essential not gonna do <laughs> oh it <my> <laughs> Mm. And I was just like, I she was, wow. She's really <laughs> and I'm like, fucking yeah, no, that was, she was excellent. What a great, what a fun character, you know? Like, they fucking stood and died on that hill. <laughs> yeah. And, and then they, and they, they delivered. They did it. They absolutely did it, you know? Um, I, I, I loved, like, the, 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 like, visually, it's just like, it's what, that's one of those things where, I don't. I'm. I'm. I've said on this podcast. I don't rewatch things very often. I often feel like a, a, a like desire to like go out into the unknown and see new things. So I don't revisit as mm -hmm. often. And uh, this is something where like I feel like it's 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 mandatory because your eyes did not take in everything in that scene. You know, there's so much to look oh, at yeah, sure. visually uh, to, that it's like this is a mandatory rewatch probably for me in the near future for sure. It's um, it's very similar to the game in the sense that there are twists and turns that are like literally like billboard sized, like right at the start of the story, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like just like foreshadowed to you where oh, yeah. you just don't even realize it until you rewatch it or you replay the game or whatever. And you're just like, oh, shit, that was there the entire time. Like So but I had the I had a kind of odd feeling with it where it's like you know so I know when something is doing that right because I love the feeling of like yeah. oh yeah you've this has been there the whole time right I, I I've I've come to like look for those things even when I'm on the first journey through it and like when I saw those things I kind of said to myself oh that's probably telling me exactly where we're going and it sure yeah. enough was <laughs> you know I'm like yeah yeah no the the the, the billboards as you describe them um I've gotten to I've gotten to a point where I'm like looking at media now where I'm like I'm going to put all my chips over here, you know, as to where this is going to go. And uh yeah, like I'm I'm super interested in seeing like if the side missions you're mentioning and if, and if the main plot as well, gameplay stuff aside, like if the main story in Cyberpunk is is going to dive further into some of that stuff that they've established with this world and it's if it's of that quality um and if there's just a compelling way to, you know, um, flesh out the city as the focus of yeah. this world, you know, I'm I'm super interested. I want to know more about Night City. I, I want to I, I want to go deeper, you know. And I don't want to like bring this this series back for a season two. You know what I mean? I just want to dive no deeper into what was behind it, which a lot of those locations and and music and everything were all game assets. Is is what. Uh, I've heard as well, you know, so it's one to one. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, it is, like, you're gonna, I mean, th that's the reason, like, like so many people who started with the anime, when they play the game, they're just like, oh, I'm just gonna be a San Devastan, like, build, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and just, like, mm -hmm. and just glide around like a psychopath, like, chopping everyone's heads off, and then when time returns to normal, they just all drop dead, you know? Like, you could yeah. do that in the game if yeah. you want. Like, it, time it's stop really cool. Time stop busted um, in, every, in every universe, in every media. Yeah. Always. No, no good I, I would say, from my professional opinion, um, I, I think you could play the game now, like, on if you have, like, a souped-up PC or, like, a current-gen console, and it'll, it'll be fine. But I would probably say maybe wait for the DLC to come out just because... They said that they're they're gonna add like more features into the game. They're gonna have like, the ability for cops to chase you in cars. Finally, in the, in the yeah. next DLC and combat they, they, they uh, chase, reworks, right? They chase other people in the game, but not you. So like, if you're driving through the city, you'll see like car chases happen with police, but they'll mm. never drive after you. <laughs> so they're still working on that. Okay. But they I'm, said I'm... they're gonna redo the whole melee system. So yeah, if you right. want to have like a an actual like ride in high frequency blade and it feel good you might want to wait <laughs> i'm patient i'm patient and if you're that's exactly it when i hear like improvements sure thing melee and and combat improvements absolutely yeah. gonna wait for that um so i think i said some variation of this on the podcast before but uh it bears mentioning because Susie brings up like yeah the game's in a good place now but you could wait a little longer um i have i have uh, out of the four games CD Projekt Red has put out, I've bought all of them near or on release. And um, Cyberpunk 2077 absolutely came up like a fucked up pile of shit. 
Um, all of their games come out exactly that way. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is not even the one that came out the most fucked up. Witcher 1 came out like insanely fucked up. Like un mm. like unbelievably fucked up. Like that's just how they <laughs> seem to make their games. Okay. Uh it comes out, everyone's like, "Wow, there's an incredible game underneath all this bullshit." Then you wait 18 months. And, and then you, you play it, and you're it. like, wow, this game's incredible. How can yeah. anyone complain? <laughs> right, 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 yeah. Like, Time. the amount of tweets that I saw after Edge Runners came out that were like, I don't get why this game got so much hate. And it's like, because you weren't there on day one. <laughs> like, what do you, what? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's video archive footage, though. There's tweets to show people, yeah. Yeah. by the way, this is what it was. naked on top of your motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There is evidence Which I got that. that. We have. I got that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, 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 shit. What was I going to bring up? Uh, oh, yeah. And just a, a side note as well is um, I did switch over to listen to the dub for a little bit as well. So I, mm -hmm. I listened to the dub and sub. And yeah, both are phenomenal. Um, we are comfortably in a world. It's nice to, to be able to be like, yeah, you know what? It doesn't matter. Whichever you want to listen to is, is good to go. Um, I, I just, it, I know that it's super boomer to like constantly go back to it, but it was such a defining thing of like anime in the 90s, you know, of just like how horrible this dub is going to be. Just completely avoid it, whatever you can. And it's like, you go, I go listen to a couple episodes here and I'm like, I could keep it or we can go either way. Um, the important thing is that both dubs are good, no matter how much you paid them. <laughs> they uh they did their jobs very well they 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 did they did it <sighs> it was great now, um, now i'm just thinking like how much did uh john carlo esposito get paid for for edge runners like oh probably <laughs> a fucking bunch because he's a he's a real actor right yeah quote unquote yeah Oh man! I, I mean, the the, the I, timing with the Mario movie as well is pretty. It's a me, Mario. That's not the voice. It was the fucking voice, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I love the the headline. That's like Chris Pratt's Mario voice is unlike anything you've ever heard before. And then you hear it, and you're like, "That's Chris Pratt's voice." Like, that's, what are you that's, talking that's, about? That sounds like Andy from Parks and Rec pretending to be Mario lazily. <laughs> Let's -a go. Um, anyway, yeah, so Edge Runners is phenomenal, and uh, I'm going to be throwing that out as a recommend to, to people. Uh, short and sweet, and um, just tight. Tight is, is, is the word that comes to mind. Uh, also, Doesn't just... Doesn't waste to, any time mm -hmm, at all. Mm -hmm. 